found a board on AliExpress that can do the basic retro function and it's cheaper. Let's take a look. The card's really similar to the card we've been using except that it doesn't have an SD RAM on it. What this card brings to the party is it does have I.O. pins brought out to an I.O. connector and they're not connected up to other things on the card. The card uses the same Cyclone 4 EP4 CE6 part that we've been using so it has plenty of room for most retro. The card ships with four standoffs which I find to be a pretty nice thing and it has the standoffs make it nice for working on the card and not worrying about a short on the bottom. The card also has the VGA connector set farther off the card which I think is uh, useful. This previous card we've been using is set back into the card which would be a little tougher to put in a chassis I think. A uh, final nice feature is that it does include the USB blaster, whereas the other card we bought didn't. So this is probably about 15 bucks cheaper than the other card, so not a bad alternative. Most of the pictures of the card on the website are shot at a diagonal angle, so I rotated and scaled them out. So let's take a look at the card's features. The card does not have SD RAM on it, so it cannot be expanded beyond the internal RAM capacity of the Cyclone 4. It adds uh, another 4 digits of seven segment display. It does have the VGA and it's a single bit of each color. So one red, one green, one blue, which would limit you to eight colors. But for the style of retro computing we've been doing, that's not an issue. It also includes PS2 connector and it has the USB to serial in the upper right hand corner. Although some of the things in the website for the part uh, show it as a RS-232 connector, that's not the case. Uh, most importantly, the bottom left corner has I.O. connector, which I verified goes to pins on the FPGA and nothing else on the card, so it isn't wasting FPGA resources on I.O., uh, shared I.O., so it's all doable to expand it out. has a nice little ring of LEDs in the sort of upper right or lower right middle-ish section of the card with 12 LEDs sort of in a circle. It's got a dip switch. It's got, I think I counted 22 I.O. on it, um, three switches on the far left. It's got a serial E squared to load it also. Uh, it's got a very small E squared prom on it. It looks like it's 4K bits. The RS-232, or the USB to serial, uh, looks like it's similar to the one that's used in our card. It's got a 12 megahertz crystal like the other one did. Here's a view of the I.O. connectors edge on. It looks like uh, the PS2 looks good. The, Power looks good for 5 volts if you want to put 5 volts directly into it. And a USB mini, and I personally prefer the mini over the micro. It just seems a little more solid to me and easier to get in. There is a caution note on the card that if you use a USB mini, do not use the 5 volt in because they would both be driving the 5 volt power to the card at the same time. But having the ability to power from both is a nice feature. Here's a close up look at the USB mini input as well as the converter and it lists as a CH340 there on the card. So I think that's the same chip that's used on the other card and probably requires a driver install. Maybe not on your computer, it might. The documentation for the card shows an RS-232 converter, but it does use the USB to TTL. So that's noted on the data sheet as well or the web page for the card. There's another I.O. connector that you can plug an LCD display into. So that's another nice feature as well. And those could be used as I.O. if you didn't have an LCD. They're pin sockets rather than header pins. The card also has pretty nice marking for the I.O. connections, which is really helpful. I think that's a real good feature of the card, too. Although this card is marked as MAX-232, it goes to the USB to serial, not to a MAX-232 RS-232 to TTL converter. Here's some of the other marking. I always get a kick out of them calling them Nixie tubes <laughs> for the seven segment displays, but fairly clear. Uh, there was a question for me about one of the pins because it didn't show up on the schematic. Uh, hopefully it is connected on the card. The website for the card has some files on it as a large uh, archive file, RAR style file. And it, one of the files is this Excel file. And it had, uh, of course, interesting spelling as we often find in these sorts of pages. But it lists all the pins that went to functions on the card. It did not list the I.O. pin, so I created another spreadsheet and included all of the I.O. pins as and that particular spreadsheet will be up on the GitHub and it can be sorted and it can be uh, filtered and such things. So um, looking quickly through here, we can see the red and green bits or single bits out of the part. The FPGA status configuration pins are also listed there in case you're needed for any setup inside of Quartus. Um, I've added the I.O. pins, as I said, for all of the connectors, and I think there's around 20 on that 26-pin connector. I think the rest are power and ground on the connector. 
the LCD connections again could be used here for other functions than LCD so it looks like it's a pretty nice uh, definition of it there was only one pin I had an issue with and the schematic did not show a connection to pin 128 to the FPGA but it did show it in the LED side so I'm a little concerned about that side not quite sure I know what's going on there hopefully it doesn't come with one LED display that doesn't work let's take a quick look around the schematic for the card it looks like it has pretty good details on it all of the FPGA connections are shown in the top the so-called Nixie or digital tube uh, seven segment displays are shown here VGA connector with a single bit for each color uh, eight pin dip switch is there as well typical power connections with the 3.3 volt 2.5 and 1.2 volts on it um, has a pads for an external clock of course the RS-232 connector is not correct it should be USB to serial um, five push buttons one of which goes to the end reset uh, the LCD in the bottom right hand corner uh, that ring of LEDs and then the IO connector so looks pretty helpful and fairly accurate except for the one pin that I couldn't find all in all I think it'll make a decent card for retro computing it does not have the connection that I would really like for the handshake for the hardware handshake from the USB to serial port I really wish that was there because that dramatically affects the ability to download quickly but other than that and not having SD RAM it looks pretty much equivalent to the other card with some nice IO features added if you want more information you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well we have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like share and subscribe